Well, you know, in my sport, you take a picture of me on my back, you know, yeah. laying down, and horizontally, you can't really judge the height. Also, TV makes you look nine inches tall. With those long, <laughs> long arms, you can touch the end of the pool. Sure, I just, you know, dive off the wall, turn around, come back. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Wilma, how are you? Good, how are you? It's been some time since I've seen you, but uh, you've always been active with uh, the Olympic uh, Committee, and you're now spokespersons for Minute Maid. Yes, for Minute Maid, and we're having a fantastic time. Are you traveling, traveling all over the country? All over the country. Now, you live in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Yes. Where I'm, do you live, I'm John? Tennessee. Pasadena, oh, California, oh, Rose Bowl, okay. and all that stuff. Yeah. Where you can swim all year round. You had a movie made on your life recently called Yes, Wilma. I did. Uh, two years ago. How did that um, feel to see your life? Frightening. Was it? Uh, you know, you think all of your life uh, this is something that you want to do. And then every time you do this, the person has deceased or they, you know, they were very ill or something like that. And I kept thinking, flying all over the world, I will not make it until the day that they show the movie. You oh, know? but you did. But I did. But you have such an interesting story because you, you as a child, you had a, you wore braces, didn't you? Yes, I was born with a series of childhood illnesses. And the end result for me was polio. And I was in braces until I was nine. And from nine on, I was determined that I wasn't going to wear braces all of my life. And the Olympics was what it was about for Wilma. It's an incredible story. Thank you. So are you having a reunion tonight? Uh, right. There's going Olympic to be a reunion at the Harvard Club where the members of the New England Olympians, which are members of former Olympic teams, are going to gather together to sort of be reintroduced to the media, just to get people thinking about the Olympics. They are a, you know, a year away, but the training goes on four years at a stretch. I mean, it's nonstop, and we have to begin to think that, hey, uh, we have to support our Greco-Roman wrestlers or our fencers or our gymnasts, not once every four years, but all the time. And so that's what the corporate sponsors who help finance our training centers and the, uh, the outfitting of the athletes. That's interesting. I never met a Greco-Roman wrestler. What do they look like? <laughs> <laughs> the thing that makes it so fantastic is that there's never been another time in history where past Olympians have been honored at any time other than at the moment that they go to the Olympics. And what it's all about is the people that have gone, that have represented their country well, that believe in their country, that believe in our programs, the Olympic movement. And uh, John and I have had a fantastic time. How did it feel to win gold, to win the gold medal? You first. <sighs> well, it's kind of hard to describe. What you have to understand is that most Olympic athletes, because it's an amateur sport, they do it for the love of the sport, not for the money. I mean, it's not like an additional $5,000 on the contract. And standing on the award stands that are, you know, clean, white fiberglass and getting the the metal placed around you. Well, it's a real validation of, in my case, it was eight years of long, hard work, four hours a day, six days a week, 11 months mm. a year. You're talking 10 miles in the water. This is the 100-meter backstroke at the Montreal Olympic Games. Uh, the feeling that, that pervaded the entire natatorium was one of excitement, and I really felt that the Americans were backing me and that they were rejoicing in my victory. Um, what's, you ever what, figured out how much time you spent in the water? Oh, it's about 8,000 hours in between the Munich and Montreal oh, games. Oh, my so gosh. So you don't look like a broom. <laughs> <laughs> You're not shriveled Wrinkly up at all. Wrinkly fingers here and everything. Right. No, but it was, uh, it was really neat to know that the country backed me. It's, oh, it's, look at that the expression. Yay, hot dog. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> it was a lot of fun for me. It really was. That's got to be. You have to be backed. I mean, my gosh, you're out there representing America well, in the field, swimming and, and running. Well, and look at the other countries. Most every other uh, country represented in the Olympics is sponsored or supported yeah. by their government. And that's because, you know, hey, the Soviets say, wow, this is a victory for the communist pol policies. And it doesn't logically hold true. And since America is doing it almost without government sponsorship, I mean, we have some occasional yeah. grants that come mm -hmm. our way. but. Where it mostly comes from five and ten dollar donations from the American public. Plus, I guess uh, in this Olympiad, it's a twenty-six million dollar budget that has to be raised without mm. the use of government funds. We have we a have clip of Wilma. <coughs> yeah, and I was thinking, well, we take a look at Wilma in action. Our girls are going to have their hands full with those East Germans. They really come up with good track stars, don't they? Oh, oh every sport. Yes, sure. but if you watch Sparticade, uh, we have one of the greatest runners in the United yeah, States of Los America, Angeles. Evelyn yeah. Ashford. Yeah. So, you know, my philosophy. It has always been that, you know, we think in terms of Russian, East German, their system. This is the 200 meters in Rome, Italy, and this is where I take my second gold medal. This race for me was always the easiest race that I ever ran because of my size. I was the first six-foot runner in the United States of America, mm -hmm. and everything had to be adjusted to me. But with my style of running, the farther I ran, the faster I became. So that was a Sort of an easy victory, and Is I expected to win it. Yes, that was the 200 meters. Oh, 200 And that was my second gold medal. Oh, what a thrill. Yes. 
And I think what makes it so great for us in this country is that you see an Evelyn Ashford and you see the programs that we have, our Olympic movement, and uh, what we do for our athletes. And they have freedom of choice. And it makes it great because Evelyn was free to make the choice to go into athletics and she is becoming successful. Did she right surprise now. you? No, not really. The only thing I'm, I'm a little bit upset about is there's a long year in between yeah. that she has to be very careful by 1980 so that she might be able to maintain. 22 children? Yes. Boy, did your dad have a lot of money, huh? <laughs> I'll tell you, he worked a lot, though, didn't he? But I only have four. You only well, have Being the 20th, I was at the very bottom, so most of them were married. I have nieces oh. and nephews that are older than I, or, you know, so it, it worked well, out Well, you weren't really all well. home at the same time. No, there was oh, never boy. more than eight of us home at one time. Well, <laughs> at least you can see where Wilma got her endurance. We have now gone and have our um, first facility in Colorado Springs, Olympic yeah. training site. So that is yeah, what it's all about. Yeah, but how high is that? Well, that's good. The altitude training is good for the athletes because when they come back to normal, okay. or if even if they compete at altitude, they have the advantage over.